Penn State versus Illinois. Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. Penn State opens up as an 11.5 point favorite. They moved to 12 and a half. They are going to absolutely slaughter Illinois from what I've seen in the first two games from the Fighting Illini and the Nittany Lions. Let's talk about it as the live post game show continues on. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And yes, thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every single day. I'm Zach Seiko, your host, joined by special guest Marty Leap of Penn State Rivals and Zane Bransfield helping as a contributor on the podcast here. And a three-person panel, we're looking for your comments as well. We'll take any and all of them. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. And right now, new customers can bet $5 to get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Okay, now it's Penn State, Illinois. If you have any more thoughts, and we do have a comment, so I appreciate that. We're going to bring it up here. And Peter says, I'm sorry, but Tyler Elsden is a liability that needs to be addressed. Peter, thanks for the comment, getting our conversation started. So, all right, not quite. Well, I guess this goes into the conversation about Illinois because should Tyler Elsden play as many snaps uh, in in the next game and then games to come? Uh, That was... My, my thought has always been is that Kobe King has been the better of the two Mike linebackers. I really didn't think it was a competition going into the offseason. James Franklin framed it that way. But I was I, I had no doubt that Kobe King was going to win the competition um, now that he knows how to command the defense a little better. OK, the, the question wasn't who was the better football player. Kobe King is the much better athlete far and above. We see that. But. Yes, Tyler Elsden was better at understanding the X and O's of the defense and the game of football itself and understanding the playbook and be you have to as the Mike linebacker, you are calling the defense. Okay, you are the quarterback of the defense. And to say, hey, redshirt freshman Kobe King, you have one year of eligibility behind Tyler Elsden. We need you to do that right away. He progressively came on. You saw the athleticism throughout the season. And now it's it you have a That second level of Abdul Carter, Curtis Jacobs, and Kobe King, when all three of them are on the field at the same time, like just good luck trying to get past them. I I really haven't seen it. But what I have seen is Delaware FCS running backs burst through the hole where Tyler Elsden looked a little confused on that play. He hesitated. Okay, he hesitated. Kobe King has the athleticism to make up for that kind of gaffe. Tyler Elsden does not uh does this hurt his playing time moving forward base do you bench him okay do you take his snaps away going into illinois zane i don't think you do because tyler elson like if you go like it's more than just like what he does as a Mm -hmm. football player and it's also about his leadership capabilities now i'm not saying you split the snaps like 50 50 but i think I think Kobe plays more, but I think you still let Elston in there, like maybe like every like four, like four plays or so, just like because he has that leadership, he has that experience, and he's he's a pretty vocal guy. Not that Kobe's not, but it's something that Penn State has to consider when they're figuring out who to play and who not to play. And it's like it's those intangible things that people often forget about that you have to really consider when you're making a starting lineup. It's not just oh, who do I like for Franklin? It's He's got to think about it more on like how they can actually win with communication and leadership and whatever else he thinks is necessary to win the ball game. Marty jump in here. Do you even move Tyler Elsden a little bit down on the depth chart? Do you consider a key on Wiley getting some extra snaps, someone who's more athletic and probably still has, he's probably in the same situation as a Kobe King where freak athlete, but yes, Tyler Elsden is, is has the smarter brain at this point, just because Wiley doesn't have as much experience here. So do you consider even bumping Elsden down on the depth chart in that regard to third string? Yeah. I'm, I'm, at this point I, I have uh, solely as a fan, I have no interest in seeing Tyler Elsden on the field. Um, that, that touchdown run today by Delaware was completely on him. And that's, and this comes from a guy who coaches, 
junior high and youth football, you, you teach your linebackers. The first thing you do is you fill that hole, head up, make the tackle. And he couldn't handle any of that. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not an Elsden guy. I don't think Elsden's the answer. At this point, I want to see Kobe King and Mike. And when Kobe King is on the field, like you said, I want to see Cam Wiley. I am just, yeah, I, I don't think Elsden brings anything to this team. And I, this is not a slight on the kid or whatever, but the only reason he ever got a scholarship in the first place was due to Derek Wingo flipping from Penn State to Florida. If Derek Wingo never flips his commitment, Tyler Elsden never gets offered a scholarship from Penn State in the first place. Whoa. Um, <laughs> I, I know I'm going. I know this way back machine, but just yeah, he's not. He he. The, the football IQ I would give you, but from a physical and just athleticism standpoint, he's not cut out to play linebacker at this level. And just yeah, that was just that was so bad today. So so bad. I'm just I'm not I'm not interested in watching him. We're just give me Kobe King, give me Keon Wiley, and we'll figure it out from there. I mean, you definitely need depth. It can't be just Kobe King. I also say consider Tony Rojas uh, at the Mike linebacker spot. Um, maybe slide Curtis Jacobs over and because it's like, and then, I mean, Dom DeLuca was also in on that play. I, I mean, that play was just kind of a cluster to begin with. There was a stunt on, on the strong side and Delaware, the tight end locked down trap the defensive end and the stunting defensive tackle on the inside. I can't remember who they were, uh, but everyone just got kind of got jumbled together on the right side. And then Delaware ran uh, either a left side inside counter. I, I thought a left side inside zone, or it frankly was a counter because it went away from, from the block. And then that is Elsden's responsibility. I saw there were comments of, well, the defensive tackle should have blown that up. Not the way that it was a slant stunt. And Delaware called the perfect scheme for it. And that's where Tyler Elston should have filled. And that should have been a five, maybe a six yard game and at least trip him up. I mean, he just, he just ran right by you, but I think you do have to weigh your options because at that point in time, remember last season, Penn state made a huge switch with the Michigan game because Tyler Elston and Curtis Jacobs on that day. I don't like to criticize Curtis Jacobs because I think he's going to be, he's, he's shown that leading, he had 10 tackles against West Virginia the, the great run he had down the stretch of last season, and he's going to be probably one of the first five linebackers selected in next year's NFL draft. But he had a bad game against Michigan. Elsden isn't fully to blame for that game itself, but that is when Penn State made the change. They said, all right, we're going to move Curtis Jacobs back over to the SAM. We're going to bring Abdul Carter in as the, uh, as the off-ball linebacker, and they really shifted some things around. I think you have to... It, deja vu all over again where Delaware is breaking off those kinds of runs now. You have to make a change going into Illinois who's going to make you pay for that more than once, right? That's how that, let, that's how we can pivot into this Illinois conversation because I get it. Illinois is not what I thought it was going to be going into this season. I thought getting Luke Altmeyer into the fold would make this team a lot more competitive, but it was the defense that propped them up, but still because Brett Bielema is a run first coach, he probably has a game plan. I've seen a lot more spread from them than I anticipated, but I, I guarantee you he's going to try to go jumbo three tight ends uh, against Penn state under center. Uh, despite what Luke Altmeyer brings here, because you got to, you got to figure that out. You can't have what happened against Delaware today with Tyler Elsden going into Illinois, who will make you pay for that more than once, twice, three times. They'll just they'll they'll make it an issue for you. Yeah, it, it literally will make an issue. And this one thing I was saying about Blaine Williams, I'm with you. They're not obviously they're not the team I thought they would be preseason. Um, no, not at all. I'm not. I before last weekend, had you asked me, I've been pretty worried about Illinois. Now I'm not. I still think Penn State. I I think it'd be game is hard slow and they went going away, but. Regardless, it's a Brett Bielema team. What is Brett Bielema going to do? He's going to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. You know, so you've got to get that cleaned up. But um, yeah, I, I think this is an opportunity for Penn State to come out, go on the road. We'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't expect it to be easy because if nothing else, you're talking about Drew Lars' first ever start on the road, 11 a.m. kick. 
I know Illinois' defense has been bad so far. Bad. They've been bad. Real bad, yeah. But it's still a defensive front seven that's pretty freaking talented, man. So I don't understand why they've been bad, but I, I think Penn State will be okay. They've, they've got to come out and just play. They It's not a show up and win kind of game, but – um. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what happens. I think this is a game Penn State probably wins by like 14 or so points. Probably one of those games that, you know, you never really feel like it's in doubt, but it's always kind of ugly. But, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. But the fact that Illinois – I mean, honestly, Illinois should be 0-2. They they got beat by Kansas in a game that's not as close to the final score. They should have lost a Toledo – this just is not a good football team, so we'll see where it goes. But, uh, yeah, I think this is one where Penn State will be challenged, but ultimately they should walk away the victory and should be 3-0 when Iowa comes down for the whiteout. And we'll break down Illinois-Penn State a little further. I want to hear from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is Athletic Brewing Company. They've changed the name of non-alcoholic beer and – because of that, we have our game changer, and I already nominated Dom DeLuca earlier in the live post game show, but now I'm going to throw, let's throw Keaton Ellis into the fold as well. Captain Keaton Ellis forcing a fumble, part of the two turnovers that Penn State was able to have against Delaware. So Keaton Ellis is your game changer of the week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company to go along with Dom DeLuca. So, like Keaton Ellis and Dom DeLuca changing the game, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that acts, actually taste good, full of flavor, well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. They brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beers, including IPAs, Golden, Sours, and much more. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers use a promo code Locked On get fifteen percent off your first online order. That is code Locked On at checkout for fifteen percent off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. And I want to thank everyone so much for tuning in for this a live edition of a Locked On Nittany Lions and Locked On Podcast Network goes live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday on every single Locked On College YouTube channel, so including Locked On Nittany Lions where you get the latest analysis around college football, college football playoff implications, all that and more with the hosts that Locked On is able to bring you with the talent, the insights, all of it. That is Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time on every single Locked On College YouTube channel, including Locked On Nittany Lines. Back into Penn State and Illinois with Marty Leap and Zane Bransfield. I'm Zach Seiko on this live post game show. We're looking for your comments too. You still have a chance to get your questions, your comments in. If you have still have a last second thought about Delaware, if you want to trash talk Illinois with us, because I think that I thought Penn State was going to be a 17, maybe an 18 point favorite. I still get it. They're on the road. So that is where I, I understand Vegas is thinking of an 11 and 12 point favor, but I still think that's not enough. Okay. I watched that Illinois and I get it. You know, you don't want to have too much recency bias here, but that Illinois Kansas game was not pretty. Okay. Kansas did have some lucky plays, a lot of tipped interceptions and everything that they shouldn't have come up with, but it's the way that it, it's not so much about Illinois offense. It's the defense. Because that was the base of everything they did last year. Because defense controlled the pace of the game. You were able to lull your opponent to sleep with the ground game that they had. They lost their top running back from a year ago. They lost Ryan Walters, their defensive coordinator, who's now the head coach at Purdue. And basically, the only one on defense, now Marty, I get it. I, I agree with you from a neutral college football standpoint that Illinois is still talented in its front seven. But honestly... The only name that most people are going to know on that defensive unit is Jerzon Newton. Okay. He's a game wrecker. I'll give you that. But Penn State could get away with triple teaming him nine out of 10 plays every single drive. 
and be very successful. I'm thinking that Penn State is going to get at least five touchdowns against this Illinois. The way that you bring back Jalen Daniels, right? Kansas, I hope college football fans, I hope Nittany Lion fans know who I'm talking about. Jalen Daniels is electrifying a quarterback. He comes back from injury from the first time in the middle of the season of last year and has the game that he does against Illinois. First time back and playing live college football snaps. And Kansas puts up 34 points, no problem, uh, against them. Illinois is constantly playing from behind. I think the deficit at one point was 31-7 to seven between the Jayhawks and, and fighting Illini. This defense, Penn State will be a, a red-hot knife through butter when, when they go into, into Champaign. So I'm thinking that Penn State can easily get 35-42. And I see shades of Penn State versus Auburn 2022 again, where people don't, they are underestimating actually how good this Penn State football team is. They're not some fringe top 10 team like they were a year ago. They win the Rose Bowl. They beat a Utah team that loses this quarterback. No, Penn State is in the college football playoff conversation. So that's them jumping up to another tier. And Illinois took one, two, three, four, five, I would say a dozen steps backwards as far as how competitive they are. Uh, Zane, jump in here. Uh, your thoughts on Illinois after uh, a near scare, almost losing to a MAC team in Toledo in week one. They should have lost that game. Toledo's good. I'll give Toledo credit. Credit where's, uh, their, where it's due. Toledo is good, but they should have lost to that Toledo team. And then uh, you, you were blown out by Kansas. I don't care that the score said 34 to 23. Like you said, the Illinois defense just – isn't going to be good enough for Penn State's offense. No, you have a no, guy like Drew Aller not. and and our dynamic duo of Nick and Katron. It's just not going to be able like they're not going to be able to do anything when you let Toledo score twenty eight or Kansas get thirty four points. That's yeah. insane. Penn State's going to score another like sixty points on them if that's the case. And like even their offense isn't that great when they played two games and already had three interceptions. Like I don't care how you get the interceptions; it's an interception. You should. Like that's gonna happen. Like the only thing yeah. they have going for them is like Altwater. His name Altmeyer. 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 Yep. Yeah, Luke Altmeyer is he's gonna run the football and yep. Penn State's defense is just gonna lock him up. They're gonna plug the holes. They're gonna tackle him on the outside. We saw how fast Zane Durant could be today when he chased down for that incredible tackle for only like a two yard gain. Like yep. it's gonna happen again. And Penn State is just that much faster. They're stronger. They're bigger. And I really don't think Illinois is going to have any chance. And like 11, 12 point favor, that's crazy. I think Penn State wins by at least 21. All right, Marty, uh, add on to that because uh, you've, you've watched Illinois over Toledo and, and now Kansas. Uh, what What is the, I guess, the toughest part about this defense? Because I, I watch Kansas absolutely maul them offensively uh, the the ground the ground game from that i want to i want to pull up those stats for for everybody because it was the way that kansas was able to run the football against a uh, jerzan newton and that front seven as you mentioned I, I mean their leading rusher was averaging 12 yards per carry their second leading rusher was averaging 8.2 yards per carry collectively 44 carries 262 yards and two touchdowns and Jalen Daniels didn't run. And now he had 11 carries for 24 yards. Some of those include sacks because remember they docked the rushing total in college football. So that number is a little deflated uh, in, in this case. But does Illinois do anything right defensively since they've lost, since they've lost Ryan Walters and, and all those? Uh, they lost a lot of guys in the secondary that were huge for them last year. What do they do right at this point? Yeah, you know, I think that Illinois, again, it's a team that is way underperforming what I expected from them. Um, but at the same time, the, the, the talent is there. They, they are more talented than they performed. So we'll see how it goes Saturday again. I think I think Penn State will win. I think the way Illinois has started has a lot of fans thinking it's going to be more of a blowout than it will be. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, – Penn State pulls it off. I think they, um, again, it, it, it's one of those games where I think they kind of hem all around early because Illinois defense, ultimately, that, that front seven is still really good. They're very okay. talented. 
regardless of how they have played, I think that can give Penn State some problems. But, uh, yeah, I think all 20 the other champion of the victory, they're going to be 3-0, they're going to be 1-0 Big Ten play, and all sites will be set forward to Iowa in the wild game. So you're looking even beyond this one. I, I really – James Franklin does not pass up an opportunity to stick it to somebody, right? Minnesota last year in, in the whiteout game, Auburn, uh, West Virginia this this time around, Maryland – every single time James Frank I know Penn State is unrivaled but like in the back of James Franklin's mind these guys he likes to put the the pedal to the metal so I know that 2021 nine overtime Illinois versus Penn State is floating around it's buzzing around in his head there's still players from that team Curtis Jacobs Keaton Ellis just to name a couple of them that remember the game very well, but for Drew Aller doesn't know that feeling. Bo Perbula obviously doesn't know that feeling. Nicholas Singleton, Catron Allen, Dante Cephas. Let's include some of the transfers, right? Johnny Dixon doesn't know that feeling. Okay. These guys uh, there. So there's combinations. There's elements of this team that are still brand new to, to what that nine overtime game felt like. And, but still the consistent is, okay, relate that back to the Minnesota game that Penn State played in the whiteout last year. Not a lot of people other than Sean Clifford, uh, you can, Theo Johnson, right, thinks, uh, knows about that game because he's been around for a while too. Not a lot of people remember the 2019 Minnesota game simply because not a lot of them were left on the roster in 2022. Not enough of them anyway. Um, but they took that, they stuck that game pretty personally. And then in this case, here we are again, just two years later, and you get the chance to do it on their field, right? You get to go up to Illinois and, and stick it to them. Kind of that's why I, I relate this more to Penn State versus Auburn just last year. Week three, okay, Penn State's good, but how good are they, right? I feel like the national conversation about Penn State isn't where it should be. People still look at Penn State as, okay, yeah, they're top 10, but they're going to lose to Michigan. They're going to lose to Ohio State, right? That's the conversation by the general public. And I feel like this is one of Penn State's first opportunities to use Illinois, at, at inferior as they are, as a sticking point to say, hey, we're here. We're in the college football playoff conversation, whether you like it or not, and we're better than the credit you're giving us to this point. Marty, would you agree? Yeah, I think this is a team that, you know, especially with the, the biggest thing to me is what we've seen from Drew the first two weeks there. Uh, they, they're, they're very capable of getting to the playoff, making a run, mm -hmm. being a dangerous team. And I'm, I, I don't think it's that the national media doesn't talk about it at all, but I think, and, and understandably so, a lot of the national guys in the O uh, will believe when, when we see when they beat Ohio State, when they beat Michigan, which I get because yeah. what is it? James Franklin is what four and fourteen against the two schools, whatever it is. But um, yeah, I think it, I I know I have said all along if if it's ever going to be the year for Penn State, I feel like this is the year. This is the year. Oh yeah. yeah. Because I understand next year Drew's back, Singleton's back, Allen's back, but you lose a lot next year. Yeah, with your offensive line and your defense, you lose a lot. So if there's ever going to be a year they're gonna they're gonna make a run. It's this year, and again, through two games, I feel like they've lived up to that. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I just this is a really really freaking good football team, man, and it's exciting. Um, I think this is their best team since at least 2017, and it just. Hey, let's see what happens. There, the the pieces are there. The pieces are there to make a run at the national championship. Let's 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 see what happens. I appreciate your guys' help on the live post game show. We're gonna wrap it up here in just a second. Let's hear again from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers to get ready for the NFL season, you have the opportunity to bet just five dollars, and you get two hundred dollars. In bonus bets guaranteed, plus all customers who bet that $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So how about that deal? right? You get a combined $300 in credits here, folks. Uh, now is the best time to join FanDuel. I, I can say that again. Now is the best time 
to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. You can bet on everything from spreads, player props, money line totals, you name it. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And Locked On Nittany Lions is your go-to podcast for Penn State Rivals. Marty Leap helping us over from Penn State Rivals. HappyValleyInsider.com. Zane and I help contribute our analysis to it as well. I want to throw it back out there. 63 to 7. I had it on the podcast. I had it in the... And I just hit Sean Clifford here over to the side. My autographed Sean Clifford card. I had it and getting excited about that. 63 to 7 uh, against Delaware. So I, I got to put my brain to the test here for how bad I think Penn state's going to try to stick it to Illinois because I watching, I I think there's going to be elements of the, the ground and pound Brett, like right. Brett Bielema was looking past both Kansas and Toledo. Those games just did not matter to him as much as James Franklin and Penn state do. Okay. So there's going to be elements that he's saving that's under center. That's going to be the, nine offensive linemen, whatever have you, but you don't have the same running attack. You don't have the same talent, period. Luke Altmyer is a much better quarterback, but now that you've seen, we've seen that they've changed the offense to fit him a little bit. Penn State's defense is designed to stop the spread attack. It is not, it, it's better designed. It's better equipped to go up against Michigan your vintage Brett Bielema, Wisconsin, Illinois, whatever. It, it's it's about it's not about Illinois. It's about Brett Bielema and the offense that he typically traditionally likes to run. Okay. Penn State's defense is better equipped to handle those kinds of teams, but they're designed as a program to go up against Ohio State, Maryland. Okay, not necessarily Michigan, but if you look at what Illinois runs this year, because they have Luke Altmeyer, they changed some pieces around offensively. They're running more three and four wide receiver sets. They're not going 12 personnel. They're not going seven, eight, nine offensive linemen to the point where you you think you have more than 12, 13 guys on the field with how many big bodies they have. Okay, Illinois offensively has changed. Luke Altmeyer is good but he doesn't have the weapons around him to, I I like, I like the way he's played. I I think he is actually hampered by the lack of talent that he has around him in Illinois. And then the defense being a shell of itself, losing Walters, losing top five draft picks in the NFL in the secondary and Penn state with the revenge factor is going to stick it to them. I am thinking uh, week three, all over again, one year ago to this point, they wore all white and they went into Auburn and they kicked the Tigers right out of their own stadium. They're going to do the exact same thing to the fighting Illini. Deja vu all over again. This time you just get to do it against a Big Ten opponent. Yeah, you know, I think you'll see something similar. Like, like I've said that the show, I think you can see a scenario where Penn State starts a little slow, pulls away, wins big, which is the Auburn game last year too. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's how that game went. They started slow, pulled away, won it big. If I had to make a prediction right now, I would say Penn State wins it, oh, man, I don't know, 34-13, 34-14, yeah. something like that. But, yeah, I'm with you. I think they'll they'll come out, maybe start a little slow, because I think Illinois will be hyped up being at home and everything. But oh, yeah. in the end, the, the, the talent difference, the talent gap takes over, and Penn State wins it. I, I, I will say, give me give, give me 35-13 is, is my early – Week out prediction, I'll say Penn State wins 35-13. Penn, Penn State wins this game guaranteed. It's just a matter of how much. Even if Illinois might make it a little closer, they add some more wrinkles that Penn State's not expecting. I, I, I can guarantee you right now on this live show, and I'll do it throughout the entire week leading up to it, that they win this game no matter what. Whether so it's Something five. has to go very sideways for them not yeah. to at this point. They, so they, win, they win the game. Yeah, something has to go really sideways for them not to win it. All right, Zane, your your perspective on this. Does Illinois put up a fight? It, you said that it's at least two touchdowns, which is what the spread is. It's a, it's 11 starting to shift into that 12. I could see this going all the way to 13 and a half. I think 14 is the cutoff because if we're looking at this from a strict Vegas betting perspective, the, the quote unquote sharps are going to have a hard time taking a Penn State team that frankly is unproven in the college football playoff territory, right? They're, they're proven as a good, great team, but then there's that conversation about elite 
and Penn State still technically unproven in that elite category. So I feel like at this point in time, Vegas is not going to give them over 14 points because it's still a road game. And Brett Bielema just has the advantage over James Franklin historically, but this is not historically. This is this season. So uh, does Illinois offer any sort of fight in, in this game? I think Illinois tries to fight. I don't think they'll be able to fight. Like I said, I okay. think Penn State wins by at least like 21 points and whatever the spread is or not, if it's less than that, I think you should just bet the over because okay. Penn State is going to come out swinging. Like you said, Franklin, whether he tells people or not, he he remembers it's, that nine. It's personal. Game. It's personal. And, and he doesn't care what the media says. If they say, oh, you guys ran up the score. No, he doesn't care. He just wants to go in there and slap it in he their face. He wants to. He wants yeah. to do that. That's what he wants to do. And plus, this is probably one of the best teams he's had since being the head coach. Maybe the only team better is that 16 or 17 team. Yeah. But I think Penn State goes in there. I think they run him in the house. You guys say maybe Penn State starts slow. But I think the only reason Penn State would start slow is if maybe they have some jitters. If like Drew Aller's like, oh, this is my first start at a Big Ten On the game. Road. On the road. I yeah. think that's the only thing that can throw Penn State off because – Nick and Katron are used to playing away at like big, big 10 games mm -hmm. that really matter. And I don't think this one is like super important, but just that point where we got a couple guys that are still figuring it out. But I think Penn State will take it by storm. And like I said, I think they win by at least 21 points. And I think Illinois is going to be kind of thinking themselves like, why do we run our mouths? Because I think they're going to get smacked in the face. I mean, I don't even know that Illinois is running its mouth per se, right? I, the circumstances are so much different. In Penn State, if it had a semblance of a running game in 2021, they would have won that game, okay? Penn State was so much better than that Illinois team. You were coming off the high of losing, right? You were coming way down. Not only did you come from come down from the high of that Penn State, Iowa, three versus four, whatever the rankings were, four versus five in 2021, you were winning. You ended up losing that game because your quarterback couldn't snap the football and you had, what, seven false starts or whatever because you couldn't even get the cadence right. Losing that game by three points when you know you should have won Sean Clifford before he got hurt. They were up by two touchdowns. It was 17 to three, mind you. And then you have to come home to a team that was limping in. They were three and five, three and six, and Illinois just played ugly football. That was a recipe for disaster. Now you're coming in where the talent gap is significantly different. You're motivated from that 2021 game and you're riding on a win streak. Okay. Going all the way back in the last season where you have a bulk of the foundation of the team. This isn't a different team from 2022. This is the exact same team. And now you're on a good wins. You haven't lost a game since Ohio state. Okay. It, it's you're, you're coming off the Rose bowl win the way you finish the regular season and now stringing together, West Virginia, Delaware, uh, Illinois better get out of the way for the train that's coming. Like I said, I think they're going to stick it to them. If I had to go an early score prediction, I think I'm thinking 42, 45, 17, uh, Illinois might get some garbage garbage points late in the game. Luke Altmeyer can run wild. He's a dual threat quarterback. Um, maybe maybe they get into the twenties, but I'm thinking right now, 42, 17 Penn state Zane, uh, Marty threw out his score prediction, 35, 13. It was uh, Zane. What's, what's your score right now at this point? Pro I'd probably say somewhere around like 35 to seven. I think Penn state okay. just comes out and I, wouldn't say like we get a lot more points than that just because I think Drew's going to be a little bit nervous, even though he's always pretty calm. But I think that's just going to be something Penn State's like, oh, we're in a Big Ten game. I think that's the only reason we don't score more points. And like you said, I think Illinois just picks up like a touchdown somewhere in the game mm -hmm. off of maybe another kind of miscommunication like today. Yeah. Oh, that's going to do it for the live post game show. Hope to do more of this. We we're looking for more questions and comments in the future. That's okay. If you didn't get the chance to get one in here, but Marty leap of Penn state rivals, happy Valley insider.com Zane Bransfield helping me out on this show. Locked on Nittany lines, become an everydayer subscribe to the YouTube channel, wherever you give your podcast, leave a review, leave comments, what you want to see talked about, what you want to see and added to the show and proved about the show. I'm all for it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on, on this live podcast. And hopefully I can have you guys both Zane, I know I'll be having you back on the show, Marty. I hope I can have you back on the show uh, in the near future. Thank you, Zach. Later.
very well. Yeah, anytime. I'm here. Ready to go. I got you. Appreciate you, Marty. Appreciate all of you tuning in for this live Locked On Nittany Lions.